Hi tubers and welcome back. The first video I did on this tiller was uh, when I picked it up. It was about a month ago. At that time it was running, although poorly it was running. Today I can't get it started. Typically when I get a engine that won't start, the first thing I'll do is to check the plug to see if I have spark. There's several ways you could check for a spark, but if you have the tool, you want to use the spark tester. They're not expensive. You could pick them up anywhere from $5 to $7 and usually connect it to the spark plug and then to the uh, pickup. Once I've determined their spark, after cranking it a few times, I'll pull the spark plug out to see if I'm getting gas. If it's getting gas, I'm getting spark, the next thing I'll do is check the compression. Now, if I have compression, I have spark, and I have gas, the next step I'll take is to look into the carburetor. Now I'm checking for spark, and we're not getting any. This could be a couple things, but the first thing we're going to check are the points. Now the points on this model are back here. And this screw is stripped. The head of the screw is stripped. I'm going to have to play with this to get it out. So somebody worked on this once before. And they put this back in. They should have just found another screw. Sometimes by tapping it, you can break up the rust. What I'm going to do is go off camera now. And I'm going to get a little chisel and tap the screw out. I'm going to turn it, I'm going to get a chisel on here and just tap it to get that screw out. And as soon as this is out and the bottom one's out, I'll come back to show you the points. Okay guys, I'm working outside but I went to get some light so you can see this. These points are a little corroded. The assembly's clean inside but it's this cover that keeps it clean. And I don't know if this was ever changed. I can't get a good view of that. I'm going to use this thin file just to lightly clean it up. And if you don't have a file like this, you can always use some sandpaper. I have to put this camera down. There's no way for me to hold this and to work on that at the same time. So once I'm done, I'll be back. Okay. While I'm back, while I was off camera, we had a little accident. The uh, tiller went rolling camera went flying. Fortunately it's still working. But I did find out after cleaning these points I did get spark. Now I'm getting spark it still wouldn't start. Sprayed some carburetor cleaner in and it sputtered a little bit. I changed the spark plug sprayed carburetor cleaner in it again and it ran until it burned the carburetor cleaner out. Now the next step is to take this carburetor off and clean it out. Now to get to the carburetor you have to take this air filter off and I'm going to need two hands for this. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to say you want to take this air filter off. If you're working outside, it would be good to have something underneath cardboard box or even a drop cloth if you should drop a screw you don't have to go looking through the grass or the gravel to find it All right. now we have this plate that has to come off and let's see what we have if you can see it this plate's held on by three bolts and those bolts are one quarter inch. Right. I 
if you do have a spark problem with this particular engine, this has points. And before you go ripping everything apart, that'd be the next thing you would check. And then goes that screw. Okay, you have the breather over here, carburetor, and here's that bowl. This is pretty dirty around here. Before I take anything apart, I'm going to clean this up with a little uh, toothbrush and some gas that I'll pull out of the tank. And I'll be back as soon as I'm done with that. This could be a, now the points on this model are back here. If my suspicion is right, that carburetor is clogged. Either that or there's water in this gas. Okay, now I'm going to the carburetor. And you can see what I cleaned what I cleaned out. You can see what was cleaned off the carburetor and this air filter bracket. We don't have a factory clean, let's clean it up a little bit. Now one of two things, either this carburetor is clogged or the fuel pump isn't working. So we'll find out in a minute. We're gonna take this bowl off, and this bowl is 13 millimeters. There we go. And again, I have that box underneath. This will catch any gas or any parts that fly around. Oh, we got gas coming out of the carburetor. So that's good news. The, uh, the pump is working if there's gas in the carburetor. So that eliminates one problem. When you're doing this, you can have a container or a cloth or rag or something to pick up this gas. Okay. I'm letting it drip into the container I had the gas in that I cleaned it off with. And whatever I'm missing is just going into the uh, box underneath. Now this bowl was dented somehow once before. Maybe somebody had a, a plier on it, or I'm not sure how it was dented. But it's not leaking. So I just give this a little tap here. Let's see what I can do with this. There we go. Oh, this, this, this looks pretty dirty in there. What I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to take this carburetor off completely. There's two screws that hold it on here. They're actually uh, bolts. So you'd like you get a wrench on there. Uh, this one here, I don't think so. Well, with a screwdriver. And I'm, I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to take these two bolts out. Take the fuel line off. The choke. And the throttle. And this will be a little bit easier to work on. Once I have this off, I'll bring it over to the uh, carburetor bench. And we'll see what it looks like over there. Okay, we, ha we have this carburetor off. And by the time I got it to the table, I spilled the gas out. But you can see inside the bowl, there's all this debris. If it's inside this bowl, it's definitely inside the carburetor itself. We have the carburetor off and I will start taking it apart. As I mentioned in my other videos, when you're working on these carburetors, you want to as clean a surface as possible to work on. You want to keep all your parts nearby, making it easier to reinstall. Okay, you have your float. Float's fine. There's no fluid in it. If the float has fluid in it, you have to change it. It's a needle valve. This is your needle valve. And this is what and this is what regulates the gas coming in and out of the carburetor. 
when your carburetor when your carburetor is full of gas the float goes up this little tab pushes the needle valve in and shuts the flow of gas off when you have a carburetor that's leaking when you're not using it your problem lies in here I'm looking to see if it's clogged where this jet is but it's not I can see right through it's not clogged here when you're doing this you want to wear glasses if I pull this gasket out it's not going back in this carburetor was taken apart I can see from the way it looks a few odds and ends that are over here that this was taken apart once before and I believe have this gasket set laying someplace. You can see how dirty this is. This is caked up. Even though I cleaned it before I took it apart, I didn't get it all off. I'm gonna have to get this off. Meanwhile, I'm gonna take these needle valves out. Clean the passages that way. I'm going to blow some carburetor cleaner through them. Before I take them out, I'm going to set them all the way down to see how many turns it took to bring it to its current setting. And that's just a starting point because it was running before. Okay. So this one, this won't even turn. Okay, here's an issue. We have screws that won't turn. Okay. So, I'm going to this. Hey guys, I'm back. I let this jet soak for a while in carburetor cleaner. And if you can see it, there's a port up here. There's a couple of holes up in here, a few over here, and one pickup on the bottom that was completely plugged. So when I checked the plug, when I checked the spark plug, and it had a little uh, dampness to it, I don't even know how it was getting through, but that's why it wouldn't stay running. The unit did run when it had carburetor clean it sprayed into it, and then it would just burn that off and go out. Uh, you can see this mess on the table. I was spraying everything into this container here and I was brushing off the carburetor. I made sure that I sprayed into all these all the holes where the jets are and that it was shooting out into the carburetor itself. I also used this wire which is off a, a brush. It was thin enough to get into those holes. There are glitches in this video. I'm having trouble with the battery. The battery's running for so long going out. I'm switching the battery and having to charge it over and over. So there are parts of this video that are missing. Anyway, I'm going to put this camera on the mount and proceed to put this carburetor back together. And we have to put the needle back in. And if you have to, have to adjust the float, it's this lever over here that gets bent up or down to get the right adjustment on the float level. I started off with a clean table and this carburetor was a mess. Okay. When you set the float level you want to check the specs of the carburetor that you're working on right now I'm not sure what these specs are on Honda manual in front of me but this looks level what you don't want is this all the way up or bent all the way down if it's all the way up when it's this way it's letting too much gas in okay and as I mentioned before as the gas comes into the carburetor the float goes up pushes the needle up and shuts the flow off that keeps your carburetor from flooding out
I cleaned out the bowl. Now this unit's a few years old. How old? I don't know. But on some of the older ones, the adjustments are right underneath. And you just want to make that snug. You don't have to go crazy on it. I just want to point out the holes that are in this needle valve. It's hard to pick it up with the camera, but it's up here. There's one. You can see that going through. Sit in my finger there. There's another one. They're at 90 degree angles on top. And each carburetor will have its own configuration. And we have one right in here. When this is dirty, these are impossible to see. It goes through. Then we have one right underneath it. This goes through also. If you can see it poking my finger. And then you have one on the bottom that doesn't go through. This is where it gets picked up. And this one on the bottom you couldn't even see before. Don't forget the spring. And we're turning this until it hits bottom. These valves have a point and they have a very exact measurement. If you use a screwdriver and clamp it down, you're going to bend that tip and you'll never get this to work right. So just turn it until you feel that it's seated. Now this screw here, every one that I worked on before had a spring. There wasn't any spring that came off on this. I don't know if it was taken off once before and never put on. I'm going to have to get a manual and look it up. And I have this all the way in, and then I'm just going to back these out. This will be a turn. That's one. And I'm going to go one and three quarters on this. And this one we're going to back out. One. See, this doesn't have a spring on it, this one here. This doesn't have a spring on it. And when I went to turn it in, I couldn't turn it in. So this was turned all the way in when I first started working on this. That could be part of the problem also. So now I'm just going to mount this carburetor. The uh, throttle was on the first hole here. And on a choke, there was only one hole. Whenever you're taking these apart, a lot of times there'll be uh, th three holes in the configuration. You want to make note of where they come off. Also, when I was taking the uh, fuel line off, you want to be careful when you're taking these off. This one happens to be metal. A lot of them are plastic. They break off. You'll have to buy a new piece. Not a big deal, but if you, if you have to use your unit, then you have to either pick one up or wait for it to come in the mail. Turn it with a pair of pliers first to loosen them up because they've been on there quite a while. Once you loosen it up, just pry it off gently with a screwdriver, and then she'll come off without breaking anything. I'll be back after I mount this carburetor to see how she fires up.